Awesome. All right, guys. Paul Germany is here, AWF of the Real Estate Group, and we are here with episode two, two. Um, of the counter, brought to you by AWF of the Real Estate Group. Uh, last podcast, I mean, the, the amount of DMs I got um, asking to have John Lott on the podcast, I mean, we, we couldn't keep up with them. So, uh, so, <laughs> so can I see these DMs for proof? So, so here he is again. This is a podcast where we have no idea what we're doing, and we're just gonna roll with it. And we are absolutely excited to have a good friend like of mine, uh, John Lott, here from Petretta Construction. Um, how you doing, John? I'm good, man. I'm uh, I'm most excited about this coffee test. Yeah. So I mean, let's, let's listen. This is awesome. Being uh, I thought it was gonna be the first podcast. <sighs> I hear Chris got that, so second is always as good as yeah. first. First the worst, second the best. You got it. Third the nerd with the hairy chest. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, we were talking, uh, we've been meaning to do this for a few weeks now. Um, last time we were talking, uh, we had a little debate there with, um, you know, me. Anybody who knows me knows there's two things I love. Uh, um, not my kids. Or, my <laughs> two or your wife. <laughs> two things I love. Christmas. And, uh, and Tim Hortons coffee. Um, a lot of people out there like Starbucks and all that, but I'm a, I'm a Tim Hortons fan. And you challenged me that I could not taste the difference between my blend, which is a, if you're ever coming into the office, it's a Tim Hortons dark roast, larger XL, um, half a cream and two sugars. Um, and you're telling me that I can't taste the difference between your, uh, your McDonald's, made the same way. Yep. My, or I, I think my the blend. argument was, I've forever been a Starbucks guy. Sure. And then someone brought me in and, and, and got me drinking McDonald's coffee and it is great. And I said that I like McDonald's coffee better than Tim's and you said, no, Tim's is better. So um, we had a, a McDonald's and a Tim Hortons coffee made a la Paul and one is in one cup, one is in the other. And I want you to uh, taste both and tell me which is which. Okay, no problem. So. Um, Two cups here, poured separately. We're not going to bore you with all the details here. I want to thank our sponsor here, Landscape Effects. Thanks so much. Uh, great Thanks, company. Paul. Does uh, does a lot of good stuff out there in the community and for for the residents. Okay, so and our other sponsor, C C, the letter C. Um, so um, let's get right to it. So cup okay. number one. Yeah. It's a good slurp too. Oh man, <laughs> it's close. I guess. Is it close? I didn't think it'd be. Oh, I didn't think, I didn't it, think so I didn't either. Think I was waiting for a home run. It's close. It is close. It, who picked up the? Are there? Is there a McDonald's dark roast? You know what? I'm, no? I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say that this is Tim Hortons. Oh, good. You win. But it, it it was it was close. This was a little bit sweeter. Yeah. Because McDonald's does not have a dark roast. Yeah, and maybe maybe the person's two sugars end up yeah, being too. Someone's got a heavy hand. Like, yeah, you, I know. You don't know. The mix is always different. Sometimes I'll get the half cream, two sugars, and it'll 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 taste like a, a, a freaking dessert. This is a great segue into a conversation which has nothing to do with what we're talking about today. But you know what I found out? Imagine having a business like one that rhymes with Schmim Schmortens, yeah. where you can pull up to the drive-through and order a chocolate chip muffin, and they're like, "Here you go." And you get in your car and you open it up and it's one of these muffins that's got stuff jammed inside of yeah. it. It's nothing near a chocolate chip muffin. Yeah. Instead of saying, I'm never going back there again, yeah, the back next back. day you go through and you're like, chocolate chip muffin, hoping yeah. that they're gonna give it to you this yeah, time. Absolutely. It's crazy. If, in our industry, if yeah. we did that, it's- um, you, oh, Absolutely. You're only as good as your last job. You're only as good as your last sale. Um, and it's not like they don't have any competitors either, right? Like, it's exactly, so, I mean, well now, Tim Hortons, McDonald's- You know, second. a lot closer than I thought. Um, the color, um, the, the color there, uh, I was leaning towards this one anyways, Did it give but it away? when I tasted them, it yeah. was, it, it, it was close. Okay. So that about wraps it up for the Done. podcast. <laughs> anyway, let's get, let's get the business. Um, I, I do have some notes here that will yeah, kind of keep us on track. Absolutely. Um, you know, I'll preface this. John is, 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 is a great, great friend of mine. So we may get off topic quite a bit, but that's, that's I didn't pick that's, these that's, chairs when we renovated this office. Did I? Um, introduce yourself. What are you all about? Uh, I'm Jonathan Lott. You've introduced me already. I'm um, Vice President of Operations and Partner at Petretta Construction. Uh, uh, Work-wise, um, yeah, I've been, there, I've been there 12 years, I think, going on 12 years. Started out as a project manager um, while I was in university. Everglades um, uh, College. Everglades University, Everglades yeah. University. At, at the time, 
construction project management was new. I think there was three universities that had it. There was Athabasca and Calgary. There was um, Eastern Michigan University and Ypsilanti, which I was leaning towards. But I had just started dating Jenna at the time. And, you know, you're like, young love. Ah, I can't be on the road two hours a day and I can't live there. Um, Should have. That would have been a lot of fun. But I he's probably one Eagles? Of Eagles? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't know. What about Everglades? Everglades? Mascot or was there a mascot? Uh, Hillary paper? I don't know. Everglades uh, alligators or something like that. I don't know. I'd have to look into that. I never even went to the school. Right. It was all via correspondence. So nice. it worked out great because I was able to do my work at, at nighttime and uh, work with David during the day. Um, interesting how I got hired. So I, when I was in university before I took my, my degree at Everglades, I had a painting company with a good friend of mine at the time. And when I started the construction management program, I said, you know what, this is great. I haven't had to work for somebody for the last two years. I don't want to be a subcontractor. I want to be a general contractor. So I was going to Italy for a summer vacation. I said, when I get back, I'm going to get a job with a general contractor. That's right. And uh, we knew the Coco family very well. So when I got back, I sent them an email, said, you know, here's what I'm doing. I want to work for a construction company. Do you have a position for me? Yep, absolutely. Come in whenever, on Monday. I'm going there thinking I'm going to be working in their construction and development division. Sure. I get there. They hand me a, a safety vest. Yeah. They put me in a truck with a bunch of surveyors, hand me out to the 401. So it's to start shooting grades every 25 meters, right? And they give you a binder and five kilometers of road and you're shooting grades. And then you sit in a truck and you wait for four hours. And I, it's not me. You know my personality is not me. When we were in Italy, we were in Rome. Probably sounds good. That sounds good to me. Are they still hiring? Yeah, I yeah, know they are. You can give me a surveyor. <laughs> Nothing against surveyors. They're great. Just not my personality. Sure. Um, when we were in Italy, we were in Rome. And we said to the cab driver, take us out of town. Take us where the locals go. We drove half an hour out of town. We're walking up to this restaurant. We see this guy we know. And hey, who are you here with? Oh, we're here with the Petrettas, this, that, the other. Great. My family knew Tina, Dave's wife, um, way, from way back. So they came to say hi. We kibitz for a couple minutes. They left. Fast forward again. I get this job at Coco. I'm there for a month. I'm like, I, I can't do this. This is. Not working for me. I don't think I've heard this story before, actually. You haven't? No, I don't think, not, not, in, this, not in this light, I guess. So I send my resume to another local general contractor who gives me the, you don't have enough experience, you're just in school, we're not hiring. Okay, fine. I send Dave an email. Hey, don't even remember me. We met in Rome. Um, here's what I'm looking for. Let me know if you're interested. Here's my resume. 10 minutes later, get an email back from him. Dave's great at that, by the way. If he hasn't emailed you back in an hour, he's dead in a ditch somewhere. Um, so anyways, I go in and meet with him and he said, listen, when we were in Italy, um, I was saying to Tina how I needed help. At that time, it was David Penny, who's our you know, controller, financial officer. Yep, she's still there. It was the two of them in the office. Right. So Dave was doing everything project management wise, business development, everything. He was, I need help, but I don't know what that looks like. And I said, well, let me come in. He says, we didn't have a huge office at the time. He goes, sit across the desk from me and just as I have tasks that I don't want to do, I'll hand them off to you. So let's start with Tuesdays and Thursdays. I went in on a Tuesday, halfway through the day, he goes, ah, oh, shit, I've got a site meeting in Brights Grove. We were building the Shoppers Drug Mart in Brights Grove, which is near Sarnia. I'm like, I'll go. It was on Wednesday. Okay, so I go on Wednesday. I come back on the Thursday. And he looks at me, he's like, just your full time, yeah, so right? Is, which is, was which was great. Yeah. And I, I've been there where just you get that one person who could take a load off you. Yeah, and it be, you become invaluable right away, right? Yeah, and I'm telling you, being able to, yeah, learning at university, it's great. I'm all for it. Yeah, yeah. being able to apply what you're learning in real time and sitting across from somebody and watching them do it, that to me was. I, I learned 90% of what I know now from that experience and 10% from school. It's the only way I, I even know how to uh, have agents learn the real estate business uh -huh. is just by just watch, just sit back, watch, listen, and, uh, and, and that's about it. Then it becomes a mother tongue. If a you mother will. tongue, yeah. yeah. And it's interesting how you know, people come in and go, are you guys related? I mean, we kind of look alike, yeah. right? Are you guys related? Is he your brother? Are you cousins? And um, we just, 
we, we mesh really well. We have the same mindset, um, same uh, mandate in terms of what's our business going to look like. And then um, four years ago in 2016, we became partners, and uh, yeah, it's been great. It's been a great, um, a great ride all the way along. Yeah, it's pretty exciting. Yeah. And and personally, you know, married, four kids. Um, you know us all too well. We get the uh, the German lot crew together all the time. So yeah, I mean, life's busy. Life's busy at work, and then it's funny. I'm trying my hardest when I have that 22 minute drive home to not make any phone calls because it's like. You're, 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 you're ramped up all day long, and then that, that drive home, I need to decompress, because the second I walk in that door, it's like Hurricane Katrina's going off, right? Yeah. And there's yeah. food flying around my newly painted walls, and... You know, what a... You know, but it's a blessing. Well, I was just gonna say, what a blessing to, to open that door, and uh, the, the hero's home, right? Like, yeah, you know, that's exactly that, it. That, 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 That'll never get old. Unfortunately, one day that'll stop, and uh, it's, it's tough to just... Uh, Lock in and enjoy those enjoy those mm -hmm. moments, especially when you're so busy, right? So yeah, I agree. Congrats on all your success yeah, there at you. home. Yes, and, that's the most important. And of course, uh, with uh, with Petretta. I mean, you guys are you guys are building something uh, even even better there, and it seems like you guys are getting uh, busier and busier. So, what uh, what does Petretta Construction do? What do we do? We're uh, we're a general contractor. Yep. Um, company started in '85. Dave's dad started it. Started doing machine foundations for all the industrial shops here, right? And and the the uh, so machine foundations laying the cement to put heavy yeah yeah you've got you've got a press pit coming in or you've got a, you know yeah. heavy tool and die right there's yep. these deep machine foundations that have to be formed and poured out of concrete and then there you go Mickey D's mm -hmm. and then you know what happened was these clients who they're doing press pits for say oh you know I need a building addition and then okay so they started building building additions and then you know how they got their foot into commercial construction was. You know, Italians, right? This this guy, Dave's dad, knew was like, hey, I know this guy. He works for Big V. They're they're expanding. You know, they need a contractor. They connected them. They hit it off, and then that was kind of their foot into commercial. And then they started buying properties, and you know, his dad would buy a property and build a shop and lease it to one of these you know tool and die guys. And so that was kind of their leg into development. And and it's it's just evolved. It's evolved. You know, in two thousand and when was it? Two thousand four or five, I think. Um, Dave bought that parcel of land behind Lakewood Golf Course, which was Lakewood at the time, yeah. built that first condo. And when I started with the company, only half that condo was developed, right? The first phase of the condo. The first saying, phase, right. yes. Which would be referred to as Villa Lakewood. Lakewood. It was called okay. Lakewood Condos. Okay. Um, only half of it was sold out and half these units were unfinished. So we started finishing them and, and then they started selling, which was great. And then he had the excess land there and that's when we built 250 Manning. Right. But to answer your question, you know, we're a general contractor. We specialize in industrial, commercial, mid-rise residential, and then... Residential, no. No. Single, We've, single family residential. No, we're not going to do single not here, family. Not here, uh, we had a couple clients on the industrial side who said, you know, oh, you got to build my house, you got to build my house. And it's just, there's so much emotion involved in it, and, um, and it's, it's time consuming, right? And it's not our mandate. It's not, it's not what we do. Right. Right? But recently, in the last five, six years, um, you know as well as I do, our condo market is, is taking off. And sorry, and we are, uh, we're very busy on condos. So, you know, we've put together a good team. Yeah. We put together a good model for our condos, which is efficient. It meets the market demands, it exceeds the market demands, and it's a great bang for your buck, right? And we build strong, structurally sound, long-term buildings, right? I mean, this is our home. We want to drive by every one of our developments now, five years from now, 20 years from now, and it still looks great and it's still standing. Right? Well, when you built that first condo in Lakewood Park, I mean, we didn't have a condo market, right? No. It wasn't even, I remember when I started in real estate in 07, 08, um, we would never dream of, but why would you buy a condo when you can get this and all, and, and, and land and, and whatever you really wanted at that time? Uh, and then so for me to see the condo market come up and we actually have a market for it and they're going up like, uh, I wouldn't say like crazy, but they're going up a project at a time throughout the, throughout the different communities. It's really, it's, it's nice to see. It's nice to have that extra market that we get to serve too. And then when you guys are building awesome condos like that, it just yeah. makes our job easier. Too. It's exciting to see all of these new condo developments, not only ours, but other developers, other um, contractors dabbling in it, right? And, and locking up these sites. And if you would have told me five years ago 
Now we'd be sitting here yeah. talking about a shortage in developable land in Windsor, Essex County. Crazy. I'd laugh at you, I right? Know. But you and I have this conversation all the time. I mean, you know, with our big family, we're bursting at the seams and need more space. And it's, you know, are you going to build? Are you going to buy and renovate? And, and thankfully, I was just, you know, I think I've locked up this this one piece of land, right? That you know I can build on in a couple of years, but it's tough right now. It's yeah. tough to find anything, and yeah. that's why the demand for condos is going up. And I think too, you know, we we have a you know a, that guy we know in Toronto who's a, a broker, and and pre-pandemic condos in Toronto were flying off the shelf, right? And the appreciation was so great, so quick that there was a great opportunity to make some money there. And I see now with short-term rentals, AKA Airbnbs being done, those are hitting the long-term rental market, supplies going up, driving rents down, investors are starting to get scared, right? Because before they were barely servicing the debt, but they were banking on the appreciation. Now it's, it's costing them money, right? They, can, they can't even service the debt. So I think we're getting a lot of those investors coming into KW, because you're Waterloo, uh, London, and now Windsor, Essex County, right? So we are seeing a lot of the sales in our current condos investor driven, yeah. with the exception of Harbor Club. What do you think the, and I want to talk about Harbor Club, because okay. it's a different, uh, different it's a different kind of, uh, of a condo, a condo to the likes that we really haven't seen from around here. but. A yeah. typical building like a like a crossings. Yeah. Um, Two fifty Manning was kind of like the start of the condo market. Yeah. That was still a little bit ahead of its time. I mean, we could have picked those up for what was two twenty nine, two thirty nine. Yeah. 239. Yeah. So uh, a couple uh, of our friends bought them at two thirty nine. Yeah, we just you know, sold them for, rented them for. Is uh, if I had that crystal ball, we wouldn't be doing this uh, on uh, at eighty thirty one wind up. No, doing absolutely not. Fiji or something. Yeah, exactly. So, I don't know, but yeah, great. That was kind of like. That first one that was a little bit ahead of its time. We still weren't sure about the condo market. Then after that, it kind of supply and demand. I mean, the older demographic is either going to go townhome, condo, but we now introduce a demographic of a younger buyer. Yeah. Don't have kids yet, or don't want to have kids, and 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 they and they're both working. They like the condo lifestyle. Um, so, what would you say the mix in one of those buildings, investor to end user, is? And is there is there restrictions on that in the buildings? So. The restriction, let's, let's use crossings at Heritage sure. in LaSalle as an example. Um, in the uh, in the condo docs and the agreement purchase and sale, it outlines that there's no short-term rentals allowed. So okay. that helps maintain the integrity of the building. Great, um, which is always good. You listen to as many podcasts as I do. A lot of the ones I listen to are about the Toronto real estate market. It interests me. And one of the developers was on there and he made a comment. He said, he walked into one of his buildings on Young Street and was standing in the lobby and said, wow, look at all of our residents, how much they travel. And the bellhop said, what do you mean? He goes, look, that guy's got a bag, that guy's got a bag. He says, they're all Airbnbs, it's a hotel, yeah. right? And you walk through the corridors and the common areas and they're beat up because people don't care. It's not where they live. So this kind of filters that out. I can't give you exact numbers on crossings to say at occupancy, how many people are moving in to their you know, their personally owned condo and how many are taking possession and listing it on the market. Because when everyone purchases, there's some of us, I've purchased a couple with the intent of renting them out, yeah. it's publicized. But some people aren't, they're just, they're buying them, they're picking their finishes and we don't know what's now, gonna happen. Now you're talking about crossings, this is a LaSalle. Yes. Um, there's a phase one, there's a phase two, two. phase one, done. Phase one sold out. Done. Yeah, when we hit Built the third floor, built. we are- we are, Building. Landing roof planks today, Landing, okay. well, which is exciting, topping off, right? We're hoping to get the roof on before Christmas holidays. Who? Us Italians who love concrete <laughs> <laughs> and big cranes, right? Well, I'm um, not pulling up there today with, with, with 3,000 people watching this go up, am I? No, no you're not, no, 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 I mean, we'll be all excited, <laughs> right? But uh, So, roof's going on yeah. today. Um, expected completion there, again, sold out. Sold out. Oct I think occupancies are happening in October. Okay. Yeah. Now we've got... A phase, phase two, so off the heels of the success of phase one. Yes, we've got a phase two, which I understand is bigger and better. Bigger, bigger. and there's actually a phase three no. that is there's land for phase three too. Nice. So phase nice. two, we're going in for rezoning for more density. Uh, it's going to be a longer building, same height, longer building, look just like this one, yeah. uh, 93 units. So we are getting so far off topic. But going back to your previous uh, question, 
If I had to wager a guess, I'd say phase one, maybe 50% of it is investor gotcha. driven, right? But it's not to deter anybody because there is such a need, and you can maybe talk to this, of the people who need a place to move into and they're professionals or they are moving in for a year or whatever it may be, or they just need a place, but inventory is so low right now and they don't want to pull the trigger on something because maybe what they want isn't out there. So they say, okay, I'll bridge the gap and rent a beautiful condo for yeah. a year, right? What I'm finding and what I see is the older demographic who's selling their house in LaSalle mm -hmm. is sitting down with themselves and their family and saying, well, why would I sell this? Yes, the market's great. It's a seller's market. I'm getting a great price here. But now I've just got to transfer that wealth that I just made into another property. Yeah. Right? Why, why don't I just bank some of it and go rent for, for a little while and, and see what happens or rent for, for, for my tenure that I'm, uh, that I'm here, right? Instead of just, just transferring it from one place to another. And, and yeah, we're seeing a lot of elderly people bridging that gap too, right? Where, okay, my house is too much for me, but I'm not ready to go to long-term care, right? So I need that five-year bridge. Yeah. And they're either buying or like you said, let me just take my money and I'll rent. And, you know, and, and so that's, um, that's helping our, our condo market. And we've, we're at a price point that it checks boxes for several different demographics. And we're building a product that, you know, it's not wood construction. It's hollow core precast floors on low bearing masonry walls. So it's quiet, it's sound. Um, it's gonna last for, you know, helps it's gonna the, outlast oh, helps, us. Helps with the stuff that you don't think about, condo fees in the future, right? We condo fees, insurance, of, right? Right. Insurance on a wood building right. is higher than it is on a concrete yeah. building. Um, so it's just a great price point. All the, you know, standard finishes, engineered hardwood flooring and, Quartz countertops okay. and <laughs> <laughs> these chairs. So yeah, we're, we're given a product that people can walk into and you know, there's four selection boards and- Don't overthink it, right? Yeah, you, know, you walk in and go, you know, the, what's been great, you learn. You learn from before it was, hey, go to you know, Unique Flooring and pick out the floor finishes and go to Joe's Woodcraft and pick out your cabinets and it was, really difficult to manage. I'm doing it right now with uh, with, a, with a project and I, I can't even get to the places. I just don't yeah. have the desire. It's, it's daunting to start, right? Yes. I wish it was just presented to me and it's just like, okay, this is what I'll do. Yeah, perfect. So, you know, Plaza Ontario is our yeah. flooring contractor for uh, Crossings of Heritage and what they so graciously did was put together four boards because 80% of the selections are, you know, flooring and, yeah. and, and what have you. So they put together four boards and you know four different colors of hardwoods and carpets and countertops and what have you so people can look at it and say okay i can pick from this right and and i did it i said you know i like three out of the four finishes on this one but i want that hardwood right and it makes it easy because people aren't traveling all over the place and it looks great and um so yeah we made the process much easier not only for the buyer but for us right and then we were just talking about this earlier in terms of upgrades it's you know, do you want a water line for your ice maker? Do you want a garburator? Little things, right? You're not walking at $349,000 in the end, it's costing you 420, right? Yeah. You can't, there's not that many up here. Yeah, Unless so we're not getting you in the door and then, and then, and then getting you to want and then yeah. raising, raising the price. Yeah. Unless you, you know, take the unit and get Ferris or Fooley to come in and clad oh, yeah. the thing with marble Start, start using right? bald so. eagle heads as doorknobs. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, you could always take these things wherever you, wherever you want heads. to. Now let's switch gears on condos here. Yeah. Um, crossings, obviously. Price point there, bulk of them except for the premium premium units are all under four hundred. Yeah. Let's switch gears and talk Harvard. selections and finishes and construction on uh, on what is one of probably the most exciting projects condo wise. Yeah. That we've seen uh, in this area, and that'd be a Harbor Club. Let's talk. Some, let's let's talk some Harbor Club. Yeah. So what's going on over there? Harbor Clubs. Harbor Clubs. Interesting. How a lot of talk evolved. over there. A lot of. I mean, the construction is well on its way. It is. Um, I love driving by it because of the because of course the location and yeah. and the construction, the spot, and uh, yeah, what, what's going on over there? You know, it's uh, it's interesting how that project evolved because um, David, you know, has has a property in Russell Woods, and him and a friend um, said, you know what, this Puds Marina site, you know, we could do something special with it, right? And they didn't know what it was. So it was an old marina. It was an old marina. People would store their boats there over the winter and they made an offer and they bought the land. And there was actually some really cool drawings done for a two-story restaurant and maybe some commercial and 
Yeah, uh, you know, Bocelli did that right next door, right? And it's full, it's a great plaza. So while, you know, we demoed down the houses that were there and people knew that Petretta Construction was affiliated with it, automatically our phone started ringing. I know you're building condos there, I want one. We're like, oh, sorry, we're not building condos, right? And, and every week, Dave was fielded in a couple of calls. And oddly enough, or smart on his behalf, he kept track of who was calling. Right. Called his partner and said, listen, maybe we gotta shift gears here. Maybe we gotta put a condo. Look how many calls I've got already. So we shifted gears. And, you know, we said, there is this area, it's one of the most affluent areas in Windsor Essex County, is Russell Woods and, and, and beyond, where, same thing, people are gonna start saying, my house is too big for me, I wanna downsize, but I wanna stay in the area, all our friends are here, let's produce this product that doesn't really exist in this area right now. And, you know. And people will want to stay in the, like Tecumseh will stay in Tecumseh. Oh, LaSalle yeah. will stay in LaSalle. They do. They, they, just how it goes. I couldn't imagine somebody moving from LaSalle to Tecumseh. No. Does it happen? Yes. Sure, but to serve that area for a, a product that where they can stay, yeah, that's, that's, that's unique. So, you know, what do we do different here? Well, we got, we have underground parking here and underground parking, you know, up against water is, you know, a challenge, but we overcame it. We put in a new break wall. We're putting in new boat slips. So you can buy a 60 foot boat slip, right? Which is pretty awesome. There's transient boat any, slips uh, along the any, canal. Get any 80 footers for my boat? No. Okay. You have to cut yeah. 20 feet off. <laughs> There's transient boat slips so someone can come visit you, park their boat, have dinner with you, and leave, That's nice. which is awesome. Yeah, that's, that's... Um, but in terms of the building, you know, the first floor is up. Uh, we're, we're actually putting up the second and third floors now. Nice. It, it's, it's staggered because it's such a big floors? building. Five. 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 First floor is 12 and a half foot ceilings. You can play basketball in your unit and you're not going to hit the ceiling. Right. Um, from a, from a construction perspective, it's different. We're using this precast system called filigree. What filigree allows us to do is have these long uninterrupted spans. Okay. So all the balconies that face the canal, there's no dividing walls in between them. So even if you're on the west side and you look east, you're gonna see all the way through to the canal. You've got these eight foot cantilever balconies. Right. You see it a lot down in Miami and South Beach sure. and these older buildings. Okay. And then, you know, second, third, fourth floor, you're around nine and a half foot ceilings. Ten, uh, fifth floor, you're just over 10 foot ceilings. Nice. But it's not just a box. And, and when you see a built, more so on the north elevation, there's all these staggered terraces. You know, there's, there's one unit on the fourth floor. The unit's 1,100 square feet and it's got 1,600 square feet of outside terrace space, right? I mean, it's an entertainer's dream. Yeah. And what's so exciting about this is the buyers that we have are thinking outside of the box. So we have one buyer who bought three units and is making one giant unit. We have another guy who bought two units, one on top of the other, we have to cut a staircase in to connect the two, yeah. right? Yeah. So they're thinking outside of the box, they're seeing this special product and they want to make something even more special. So our selections, I mean, obviously- Completely uh, we, different. We know the, the type of clientele that's there. They, they want what they want yeah. and they won't settle, settle for less. So what's that process looking like? So have selections started on some units? They have. Okay. So we, you've probably seen the trailer that Landscape yep. Effects so Beautiful. graciously placed uh, there for us. Our sponsor. Yeah, <laughs> they're, and they're our partner, our landscape partner in the building. Awesome. Um, yeah, not development partner, but yeah. they're doing the landscaping there for yeah. us. And so they said, let us put one of these trailers here. You guys can outfit it yeah. as your selection center. So, you know, we have Wayne's Woodcraft doing the cabinets. Yeah. They're phenomenal. Plaza Ontario, again, with all the flooring finishes. Um, Jenny Belanger endorsed the Pico from One Plus One, and J Form is Jenny's company. They're the design, uh, the designers, and they've done such a great job. Yeah. I mean, even the common areas. I think we've sent you some of the renderings yeah. of the common areas. Yeah. They're spectacular, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like you're walking into a boutique hotel, yeah. Yeah. and it's fantastic. Yeah, so very special. Um, you could again buy one of these units, and with the standard finishes, have a condo that the finishes rival custom homes in Windsor Essex County. Yeah. But again, you're getting people saying, great, love the standard finishes. Good I'm going start to, for us. Yep, I'm great going to Wayne's and I'm gonna do something special. Or yeah. I am going to do herringbone hardwood throughout everywhere instead of just the front end. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. people are taking it to a whole other level and you know, the things we're seeing in here, I want a shuffleboard in my room, in my, you know, my Greg yeah. room and it's 22 feet long and accommodate right. this, right? And, yeah. and we are to, 
within reason, right? Yeah. Some people, you know, were, and originally we're talking, I want a sunken in hot tub in my patio. It's yeah. not happening, right? Yeah. But um, so it's pretty exciting when you have a product where you've thought outside of the box so much and your buyers are equally as excited about it and yeah. they want to think outside of the box and take it to the next level. Because right. when you're spending that much money too, you don't want to walk down the hall to your neighbor's unit and see the same thing you've got, yeah. right? And um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty special. Like th these projects, like what's the, uh, like, like what's it look like starting from idea? Yeah. And then red, I assume there's red tape to get through, yeah. cities, townships, all that stuff. And I, and I assume that takes years and years of, of work at times. So like, what's that look like from, from beginning? And then we won't spend too much time on this, but from yeah. beginning to where you're at now, shoveling the ground, what is that stuff? Because I think people think it's just like, okay, I got the land, I'll build a condo now. Yeah. But and I, it's, I it's assume a, that's not how it works. It's a great question because Windsor is such a small city. Yeah. So, you know, everyone says, oh, you hear they're going to build a condo in Puds. Great. Mm -hmm. Two months later, deal's dead. It's not happening. Shovel's not in the ground yet. There's, you know, if you're fortunate enough to buy a piece of land that's already zoned for multi-unit residential and you just have to go in for site plan control and a building permit through the city that... That takes three, four months, right? Um, on the condo side though, if you're already a Terion approved builder and developer, that checks a bunch of boxes. Good. But if you're not, that could add six, seven, eight months to the process as well. There's also the plan of condominium that you have to go through. That takes several months. So in terms of Harbor Club, for example, it wasn't zoned for multi-unit residential. Okay. So you have to go for rezoning and to take another step back, if it doesn't fall within the official plan of the area, then you have to go in for an official plan amendment before you can go in for zoning, rezoning, okay. and then you go through site plan control. So that process could take upwards of a year. In that time, we're doing some preliminary design, but you don't want to get too far along until you know, okay, official plan supports this, and it's zoning that supports it, and now you're going for site plan control, yeah. right? Because you're, so, you're heavily invested before that shovel even goes in. Yeah, you're... you're From the land purchase to... Soft costs. You know, lawyers and, and all that's that. That's exactly it. So that process could take a year, year and a half, right? Yeah. And that's what it took at Harbor Club. And then you take a product like Harbor Club where we're doing uh, underground parking, mm -hmm. and with the whole structure, the structural foundation work and gray beams not getting too technical, but I mean, there's, there's rebar in there that's two, two and a half inches in diameter where, you know, there's 50, 60 bars in a gray beam and it takes two, three guys to carry one. Everything just takes more time, yeah. right? So I now you're that. gonna see it going quick because the above ground work is much easier for us to do, yeah. uh, for anybody to do, but. So the underground parking obviously is done. That's done first. Done. Now, Flooding and all that stuff. I mean, I'm sure there's so much that Knock goes on into wood, that, we that, that, had. that goes into that though to, to make sure that it doesn't happen. Yeah, a lot of testing, a yeah. lot of yeah. But it's uh, knock on wood. We've we've had a dry basement in there, which yeah. is great. Um, so yeah, the, the process could take you know six months, a year, and and then we now have development partners or just guys we're building for who yeah. you know. I have no involvement in construction whatsoever, but it's a couple of guys that say, hey, let's buy this piece of land. We think this is great for a condo. Now what do we do, right? Yeah. So we provide this service where we'll take the entire process on for you. We'll go through zoning and site plan approval and plan a condominium, and we'll get yeah. you approved as a Terion vendor. We'll make the whole application process for you. Makes it easy, right? It's right. hands off, and for them, it's a traditional investment. This is this is a development we want to do. Yeah, it's a busy. lot. These guys are busy anyways, right? It's not their yeah. It's not their thing. Always hire the always hire the pros. Right? It's a lot different than just going and buying a piece of land and saying I want to put a commercial plaza there. I just need site plan approval and and right. go right? right. So for us, that's the exciting part. Seeing a piece of land and okay, it's not zoned, but you know, will the city support it? Yeah, they will. Okay, let's let's tell let's lock it up. Let's you know, let's tie it up. You know, conditionally six months, yeah. whatever it's going to take. Let's go in for rezoning and site plan approval. And any, uh, any other projects in the uh, in the pipeline you can yeah. speak of, or like what areas? Because you guys I, I aren't can, just Windsor, right? You're all the way up the yeah, we're I mean, one even even across across uh, Canada. Across Canada, Canada yeah, right? we we just finished a plan of fitness out in Moncton, New Brunswick, right? Oh, wow. and, and next year we got a couple to do in BC. So, you know, uh, development aside, on the construction side, our mandate's always been it's a lot easier to get one client and do 10 jobs a year for them to try and go out and get 10 clients, right? right. So 
those clients we have, we service the hell out of them, make their job easy, right? These, these guys from Plant Fitness, this franchise group is from New Hampshire. They never went to Moncton once. Right. We have software in place that every day we all get daily reports from our site supers, pictures are there, clients get it. Um, you know, thankfully, because of technology, we're able to do video walkthroughs and what have you. Yeah. So there's just this level of trust they've built with us. Um, that uh, you know, affords us the opportunity to get these clients and just, they call us and say, okay, you got another one to build, right? Yeah, so yeah. we're doing some pretty exciting stuff, you know, several plant fitnesses in the Niagara region next year. Um, you know, we're doing a children's foundation in the beaches in Toronto, yeah, which is pretty exciting. And um, yeah, just, there's a lot of great commercial projects on the go. Has COVID affected you guys at all? Or? I'm wondering if we were gonna talk COVID. Yeah. You know what's funny is you know, David and I say this all the time in the office. We say it to people we're on the phone with. We say it to each other. It, for, fortunately, from a business perspective, it hasn't affected us. Right. It has delayed work. It hasn't canceled work. Okay. So 2020, we were supposed to build 10 Planet Fitnesses. We built one. Those other nine haven't been canceled. They've right. just been pushed back, so, right? right? So we're just deferring work till 2021 and on. Um, but fortunately, you know, the residential market, as you know, is on fire. It just so happens we have several residential projects on the go right yeah. now, right? Which have kept us very busy. And throughout the lockdown, residential was deemed essential. So we had a couple of projects that were on the go that we could keep working right, on. Right, as long right? as that permit was out. And, yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. Um, we, we are building the first hotel in Tecumseh right now. Actually, it's oh, at yeah, Lakeshore, sure. the Holiday Inn yeah. Express. So that's exciting. Uh, you know, furniture's going in right now, flooring. It's We're in the finishing stages. Yeah. It's going to open in spring. Is that of, a similar build to like building a condo? Because I know across, the, across the street when you when you cranked out Taco Bell Freshie, Baskin Robbins. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's pretty like, that. you guys could probably crank that out in your sleep, right? That's, yeah. That's the box yeah. and then the fit out and then... I mean, hotels and condos are a lot different. Is the hotel build is similar to a condo build? It's it's the structurally, it's the exact same okay. way as crossings at Heritage. It's okay. block and precast. It's quick. Like, it's efficient. That one's six. Six. And we're pretty dialed in on a footprint like that. Weather permitting, we could put a floor up in under three weeks, right? So, it's wow. quick getting the structure yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just 105 rooms of finishes, right? Yeah. And a pool and all those exciting things. So it's it's pretty exciting to get our first yeah, hotel under our belt. I wanted to talk about that. Yeah, yeah, and and you know what? For for to every east of downtown, the closest hotel to this hotel is 16 miles, right? Which wow. is what 30 kilometers or whatever yeah. it may be. So we've carved out a little niche for ourselves. We're servicing a couple big sports facilities, a couple business parks. Unfortunately, due to COVID, business yeah. travels down and sports travels down, but it's going to come back. Everything's yeah. going to come back, right? Yeah. Well, why is that backdrop not back here? Uh, because I like the visual of the office. Oh, okay. Good yeah. question. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is my favorite part of the office. Yeah, yeah. The, I love it the, too. The, the, the glass looking in from the... Uh, yeah. From there to Look, the twins are in. Chris, it's, it's a tan day today. I missed the memo. It looks good. <laughs> well, every, That's okay. Every, I'm just saying you guys look good. Yeah. Every, every, uh, every Wednesday is a tan day. Tan day. I wear black. Yeah. Everyone. Oh, I'll make them. Nice um, what's a common myth about, about the industry uh, industry that you're in? This is a great conversation, by the way. There's stuff I'm getting out of you that yeah. like I, I I didn't even didn't even think we cover. So this is this is this is great. What's the biggest What's the biggest myth out there? You know what? And and this is you, you got me on this question. Um, and all I could think about was people clients sometimes new clients have their back up against the wall like they have to um they have to be cautious that they're gonna somehow some way someone's gonna play a game on them right, right. and it couldn't be farther from the truth for us we are you know very client driven right and things are going to come up in construction even you know more so in renovation right Right. If you're sitting there and you're nickel and diming your client every single time, it's not going to go far. It's going to be your last job you do, right? right? And there's times where it's, hey, can you take these two beams down while you're in there? Yeah, no problem. We'll take them down. And it truly, it costs us more to do the paperwork for the couple hundred bucks that it took to take it down than just to do it, right? right. So the, I would say the biggest misconception is that contractors aren't working for their clients, right? right. But I, I, again, it's farther from the truth. That's We, we pride ourselves on the fact that we are very client driven yeah. and 
you know, if it wasn't for our clients, we wouldn't be in the position we are. We're very fortunate that we're very well, busy right the, now. The repeat business is, uh, is, is, is tells, repeat, tells the story itself, right? Repeat business and referrals. Yeah. And, and you know this more than anybody, right? Like I've got this theory. I think we've talked about this. It happens more for guys than girls. Guys want to have a guy. Yeah. So it's, it's, oh, I blew a tire. Go see this guy. Yeah. He's my guy. And that whole vetting process all the boxes have been checked by that one line of, I've got a guy, yeah. right? You got a car guy. And I, I was looking for a new car. And you said, yeah. you got to call this guy. And I called him. And right away, I knew why he's your car guy. Because it was very similar to dealing with you in the real estate side of things, yeah. right? So referrals are huge. And especially in our industry, they're huge, right? Yeah, and, and you want to make the... Uh... Whenever I get a referral, I want to make the refer look good and proud that they yeah. referred me, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we, you good. know, and, and even like with you know going back to Plant Fitness as an example, it's it's a franchise based company. Yeah. So you've got these franchise groups who buy territories, and when a guy buys a new territory who's based out of Boston and he's bought a territory in you know Niagara region and he doesn't know anything about Ontario, he calls the other franchisees right. who have clubs in Ontario. The first question he says is, who's your architect? Who's your builder? And we want to be the guys where they say, these are my builder, call them, right? Yeah. We always have to be, you know, what we always make sure is we're not gonna take another client if we can't service the original client who referred us, right? Yeah. Fortunately, we've been able to, and that's how, you know, we, we've grown so big with that company, with, with Plant Fitness, with other companies too. It's interesting, there's these waves, right? Like when I started with the company, I remember coming home and seeing a Jenna, if I have to see another blue bulkhead get built in a shopper's drug mart, I'm gonna go crazy, right? <laughs> it was 90% of our work. The cash money is right? Yeah, cash we were money building cash money, check cashing stores all over Canada, and then keg steakhouses, Kegs, and, yeah, yeah. right? Like it, there, there was always these waves, and you know, cash money's, it was like somebody turned the key off when regulations came into place for that whole industry, which is a whole other conversation for another day, but. Every time you know one of those waves falls out, there's always another one that comes back in, right? And and um, so you know, fortunately, right now it's Planet Fitness, and then we have some developers we work for, who we do anywhere from two to five projects a year, right? And they just they rely on us because on the retail side, you get a letter of intent from Shoppers Drug Mart, and there's a landlord work schedule and the landlords will send it to us and say, Hey, give me a budget, right? Like yeah. it, it's funny giving a budget off a cocktail napkin, right. but they say, here's my site. Here's the lease. Give me a budget. Right? right. And we work with them from that point till we turn over the keys to the client, right? To the tenant. Yeah. And it makes their job a lot easier because they don't have to worry about that. They can go and find more deals, which in turn generates more work for us. Right. right? I don't know how we got into that conversation, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> I've had so much, I, I love I've had so much coffee right now. I, I love a podcast. It's like, where the hell? I like, how like, I mean, I'm, like, I'm glad I wrote these questions down. It yeah. kind, of, uh, kind of keeps me, we kind of went back and forth and, and, yeah. and, and, and all around it. Yeah. Um, and I, we've done it all. We have done it all, <laughs> haven't we? We'll wrap it up with some last words. What do you see uh, uh, in the next five years locally? Uh, honestly, from, from a development uh, side, I think what the I guess what the trends are. What, are, are we going par for the course with condos or? Uh, yeah, listen, I don't have a crystal ball. Yeah, but what I can tell you is, you know, we're we're very busy with condos right now. You had asked me what irons you have in the fire. Right. From a condo perspective, from a multi-unit residential perspective, um, we have six, seven towers. I'll say right. buildings. Some of them are one development with multiple towers in it. Yeah. So we've got six or seven towers in various stages throughout those processes we talked about earlier today. Right, right, right. There's one in Kingsville that um, is being marketed right now, and as soon as they have the reservations, By the to, golf course? No, okay. uh, right next to the high school. Oh, 140 Main Street. Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's a three-story, 30-unit. <clears throat> um, hoping to break ground if if you know sales happen in time, yeah. hoping to break ground in the spring, which would be an exciting build. Um, so Windsor County, the next five years, I, I see us servicing this need for residential, for, for space, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's working for us. Um, we got a great formula put together for it. We have a great team in place for it. Yeah. 
but I don't know. I, I don't know what's going to happen from here, right? I mean, we're but we're building right. cannabis shops everywhere now, right? Yeah, so right. like we're we, with the market, tre- uh, yeah. market trends, but like that's that's what's being built right now, yeah. Yeah, and and it's just it's who would have thought that we'd be building cannabis shops and it'd be legal, right? Five years right? ago, it wouldn't be we would, that wouldn't be on the uh, on the horizon. I guess that's always the fun part, right? Like you don't know what, what you're it's ever changing. You know, it, look years. at you know. Okay. Uh, you should put like one of those tallies, like how many times we talk about the pandemic. Yeah. But, you know, what has the pandemic done? It's <clears throat> unfortunately, like I feel for small businesses right no. now. I really do. And, and, you know, if we want to have a whole other podcast about the fundamentals of, of the regulations they're putting in place, some it may not make sense, right? But brick and mortar retail, sure, it's suffered. But online retail has taken off. What has that done for construction? You know, up in the Toronto area right now, Mississauga, surrounding areas, Hamilton, these warehouses and distribution facilities in the, we're talking million square foot yeah. facilities are being built. Yeah. And you know, Amazon's building them and all these companies okay. are building them because now they got distributed. it. Like, yeah, it's, isn't it amazing how you order something right now and tomorrow morning someone's there and they've delivered it already like, it's amazing about, it's scary it's yeah uh, i mean all the stuff that gets from point a to point b i mean that's a lot of jobs too but uh yeah you know there's uh it's it's almost too easy that's just, that's kind of that's kind of scary right it's scary but i guess when i'm you know when one door closes another one opens yeah. so certain our industry is going to evolve like people are, yeah. there is such a shortage of skilled labor out there and i'm not saying Qualified guys, I'm saying skilled labor, you know, any tradesmen, there's a shortage of it, right? Yeah, People aren't going into it. And it's something that we and some of our friends who are general contractors yeah. are, you know, working so hard to get kids in. You can make a great living in the trades, right? And there's a huge need for it, a huge demand. And so, you know, that, that's a shortfall for us or something we're trying to fulfill is hiring some additional right. people. But you got to find the right people, right? Absolutely. So, yeah. Well, Hopefully hey, that answers your question. Uh, you know what? I, I've had so much coffee, I really have to use the washroom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, totally quits. Aside. Awesome. Appreciate it, man. Are we six feet away right now? Is we are. We actually, Where's the John actually, Legend arm from the voice? Eight, well, we've measured it. We're actually eight feet away. Good. Um, we're in each other's bubble. Mm-hmm. Um, listen, all the best. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate you. Yeah, appreciate um, you too. Here's uh, cheers to a great uh, 2021. To McDonald's. Uh, to uh, to Warren's Extra Large Dark Roast. Half a cream and two sugar <laughs> um, if you're coming into the office. Um, this was fun. Yeah, I like uh, this. So we wanted to do it for a few weeks now, and uh, I just hope we provided some insight um, into really that we talked a lot about condos and construction, everything that happens on the back end to get you that product that when you put the key in the door, uh, it's it's yours. Um, yeah. There's, there's some, some great insight there. To be it's continued, exciting. I think. We'll, yeah. we'll do this again in a, in a, in a little while, and uh, we've got some, you know, some other projects coming up. And, uh, we should almost do the next one remote on one of the sites. I like it. That'd be cool. That would be cool. Yeah. yeah we'll get you a hard hat for that amazing head of hair. That's a whole other conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you guys. Awesome. Take care. Thanks. Have See you guys. Day.